just got this new shirt and I like it. Look, it's got buttons. What it made me like it. <clears throat> Not only because I really like crop tops, but I like the high neck. And there's something about frilly things, if they're done right, that are appealing to me. And the embroidery, I feel a little bit like a tablecloth. Hang on. Anyway. But, <laughs> like a little bit like a tablecloth, but, um... I am super obsessed with Midsommar, which is a Swedish holiday, holy day, holiday, holiday, <laughs> it's a Swedish holiday that happens right around um, the summer solstice, and I've been doing a lot of research on different cultures and stuff, especially ones that are, well, not just ones that are, are related to my heritage, but after seeing the movie Midsommar, um, I was blown away. What? And by the way, Midsommar is spelled mid, M-I-D-S-O-M-M-A-R, if you want to look it up and do some research of your own. Um, now, the holiday in Sweden now isn't exactly like the holiday, um, how the holiday is depicted in the movie. <laughs> um, but I think long, long time ago they did used to do sacrifices of some sort. It looks so pretty. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit today about <sighs> the deep, deep emptiness that is inside of me that no one and nothing can fill. There is this over the past since since I posted my video, or I shared the video yesterday about UCG, I've just been really, um, off and on, extremely depressed. And I've made... <clears throat> Someone just responded to my message about asking them if they wanted to join. I'm... okay. I'm just trying to stay on, on track. Um, so, the, the deep emptiness that was within me cannot be filled by anyone or anything. Um, and if I do attempt to fill it with anyone or anything, it could likely resort in a codependent bonding or attachment or relationship and I'm aware of that and I don't want that I want to be able to love myself and fill that void with the self-love that no one else can give me because I can be I mean I've been messaging Aza and I've been around Brandon all day and I still have this epitome of of emptiness and loneliness and why that, why I have that right now is because there's a couple people, two people that I would really just love, love, love to talk to, but they haven't messaged me today. And so I, I feel a deep emptiness and void because I feel as though those people just aren't interested. In communicating with me or they're abandoning me or that they say they love me or they want to talk to me but really do they so even though I've been around Brandon all day and he's been so kind and compassionate for me you should have seen it yesterday I was just a, a mess um, and really depressed and I all I wanted to do we, we got done grocery shopping and I just needed to lay down and I did. And then he brought me, he, he said, close your eyes. And he brought me all my spiders. And he was carrying all my spiders and he gave them to me. I hugged all my spiders. And he just said, just lay down. Just take care of you. 
and I'm gonna put the groceries away. And he did it all. I'm like, but I want to help. He's like, you could help me by just taking care of you. And then, um, and then we were gonna just sit in on the couch and watch Big Bang Theory, but like we did laundry, and so there's laundry everywhere, all over the couch and everything. And he's like, all you gotta do, if you can, what you could do for me is just go and clean off the couch, and then sit down on the couch and get cozy and and then we can put on our show and and lay down and relax and watch the show and i'm like okay i will but i didn't move and i'm like i will i just it's a lot it's a lot of laundry the house is a mess i don't have the energy and he's like okay okay don't worry just lay there and he moved all the laundry and he put all the groceries away and and all he had to do was just lay there. And then... And then he, um... I can't remember. He had my big caterpillar out there on the couch. He put my caterpillar there and he helped me bring the blankets out. And my all my spiders and my lava loopsy. And um, and we all just, all me and my stuffed animals and my blanket and my pillow, we just curled up on the couch. <laughs> it was so nice. Because I just, I, I barely have much ability to function right now and like, to, to get out of the house today it was such a big feat. I took a nap today and that was really good. I laid down on the bed and, and I was just like, this is really cozy. We wanted to go up on top of the mountain today and go drive around and maybe walk around and hike. Or just experience the rain because it's raining on the mountain today. But I, I didn't have the energy. And then... And then I was so mad at all of my clothes today. I said, I hate all my clothes. I hate them all. And they and looked at my clothes. He's like, well, what do you want to wear? I don't want to wear anything. And then, um, I want to wear my pants, but they're dirty because I want them to work. He's like, that's okay. Just put them on. And I put on my pants. And I was angry about all my shirts. The only thing I could find successfully was socks. I was angry at my underwear. And then I laid down on the floor on all the clean clothes. And, and I was laying down and I like, got put my shoes on and I stuck my foot in the shoe box. And I was digging around with my foot. I was too lazy and sad and depressed to get up and put my shoe on. So I just picked my shoe up and I'm laying there and tying my shoe. I'm laying there. I didn't even use my hands to get my shoes out of the box. I just used my feet. But we had a good day when when we got out of the house. I did have some anxiety come up, but um, but we watched a baseball game. Found a baseball game at the park, and we got some Panera. And we just sat and ate Panera, and then when we left from watching the baseball game, <coughs> and my anxiety came back up. Um, and he's like, where do you want to go? I'm like, I have no idea where I want to go. Even the thought of just switching locations is just a lot. I just, uh, you choose. Maybe let's go to the mall or something. I don't know. Okay. So we went to the mall. We walked around. And that was really good. And got to look at all sorts of stuff. And I mean, I bought this shirt. And I've been working more on... <coughs> on, um... I read in my succulent wild woman book buy yourself more gifts I don't buy myself a lot of gifts I'm really I'm really careful with my money and I was like and so I've been working on that and so yesterday I bought myself a candle and some chapstick and today I bought myself a shirt and so I'm trying to be kinder with myself because I work, I work hard, and I'm a good worker, and I deserve to buy myself a few things if I want to buy something. So, today when I was reading, I read from The Power of Now, and um, the post-it notes that I found are 
I was reading about relationships. Mmm. Baja blast. Mm. No, yeah, I've been eating like a pig today. Or today and yesterday, too. I ate for breakfast, I ate some Reese cups. And then I celebrated because Biden got, was it two? He got 290. He got 284. And now it's up to 290. And so I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to celebrate. And I'm going to make a margarita. And so I made a margarita and it was really good. So I drank a margarita for breakfast. And then after that, I ate a bunch of cookies. And yesterday I ate like, like 10 cookies. Uh, the minty Milano cookies. So I ate like a bunch. I've just been eating a bunch of junk. And God knows I need it. So... Some of my post-its today are related to relationships. Let's see, they're over here. Okay. Look at this cutie. Oh. 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 Some of the post-its. a lot about consciousness and unconsciousness. Um, I'll just read them and then if I want to talk about them, I'll talk. <clears throat> Give people space to express themselves. Do not react negatively to your partner's unconsciousness. You become unconscious yourself. Unconscious behavior is not who people are. When someone behaves unconsciously, relinquish all judgment. The unconscious behavior in my friend, hold it in a loving embrace. Know it, react in love. Do not accuse each other of being unconscious. Whenever your relationship, whenever your relationships bring you, bring out the madness in yourself, or your friend or your partner be glad what was unconscious is being brought to the light so and then these are the two most important ones for me um, lately that really kind of struck me as um, significant do not pursue the goal of salvation through a relationship I will be disillusioned again and again so for example yesterday um, I Lately, I've been having, or I, a few days ago, I, I had like some really good strong connections with Stan, um, where he was really feeling my my vibe and understanding my mental health issues and um, the pain that I experience in relationship to in relation to the um, growing up in UCG and we were really relating and um, and just we had we have a lot in common with the pain that we experience. There's Gretel. Gretel, what are you doing? Gretel. Gretel. <laughs> um, and so he was becoming a really big support for me. And so me and my uh, needy loving self. Okay, I need to be nice to myself. <sighs> my ability to make really deep, strong connections with people. And then, and feel such an attachment to them. Um, then is challenged when that person goes distant for a few days or however long they go distant for. And mind you, Stanley has his own stuff that he is working on to take care of himself and so I can't rely on someone to always be there for me but so I build this like reliance really quickly on just um, having someone there who understands and supports and 
loves me and wants to help and then feeling a need to go to that person for reassurance. And so yesterday, when I had my panic attack, all I wanted to do was just message Stan. And just be like, Stanley, hey, help. I'm having a panic attack. I really need some encouragement. But I didn't. And the reason I didn't is because he was already, uh, hadn't responded to a few messages that I had sent, um, I think the night before or something. And so I like to give people space, you know, if they, I think it's best if someone isn't responding for whatever reason to make sure not to overwhelm them. And if you're communicating with someone off and on throughout the day and they're already talking to you, you know, then being like, hey, look, I'm, I'm freaking out. I just need somebody right now. But I didn't, and I, I didn't because I, I don't want to build, I, I don't want to form, and this is before I even read these post-it notes, I mean wrote them from The Power of Now, I don't want to form another attachment that's unhealthy to someone who I love and means so much to me and then just constantly go to that person with my issues like hey can you help me can you talk to me blah 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 because i know that no matter how much that person understands or wants to be there or whatever really what it comes down to is that hey look you're entirely alone and you gotta deal with this on your own you know how to get yourself through this so you do what you need to do to be able to take care of your brain. And I didn't message anybody. I, um, I, I, it felt like I was having a panic attack for a while. I don't think I was really having a panic attack for that long. I don't know. It was probably, I mean, it was probably just like at 30 seconds or something. Felt like a long time. I thought I just saw an orb. <laughs> so it's 17.30. I'm gonna have to go back to watch this part. <sighs> Could just be cat hair. In one of the videos I posted, there was like a ton of cat hair flying everywhere. But I, um... So I was like, fuck. I looked at all my post notes. I'm like, I'm just hurting so bad. Fuck all these post notes. Fuck them. <laughs> I can't do it. And I was like, okay, there's something I could do. I have this door, the shadow door, and that's the only thing that I could go to that made sense right then. And I just stood there in front of my shadow door and read those dark, dark post-it notes. And thought they connected to me and they helped me feel better, I guess, and not alone. And, and then, of course, I wrote it all over my arms. And, um... And so I took care of me, myself. My other post to note is, um, the relationship is here to make me conscious, not happy. And that one is also really good because I rely so much on wanting my friendships, especially my friendships with men and guys and dudes for... Well, and with Aza too, and with Lolly, and with my sister, or whoever I'm close with, I rely so much on wanting those relationships, those friendships, to make me happy, that I, I put so much emphasis on the fact that those, those friendships should make me happy, but there's so much hurt and pain and like feelings of neglect and abandonment and sadness and and then when those people some of them deal with a bunch of stuff i guess most of them <laughs> deal with a bunch of mental health issues and and so when when um when something happens where 
I don't feel loved or um or I feel neglected or abandoned again then I go immediately to, to feeling like what this this relationship is just hurt it just hurts I just feel bad I just want this person to love me why aren't they talking to me why aren't they responding what did I do what can I do to make it better And, um, and it's a good realization for me that, hey, the people that I know that I love, they don't have to make me happy. Those friendships, those relationships don't have to make me happy. But they do, they can, if I allow to, make me conscious and help me to... And just realize, hey, I'm feeling pain, I'm feeling emotions from whatever is going on, from is a person having their own mental stuff they're going through, or they're responding, or they're not responding, or I feel good because they're talking to me and I feel a connection and uplifted. Um, But regardless of what those emotions are that I feel based on those friendships that um, that it doesn't matter whether I'm happy or sad or angry or hurt or scared as long as I allow myself to realize hey I'm feeling these emotions I'm feeling this way I have this fear and that is completely okay to feel whatever way I need to feel or I am feeling and um, to not react unconsciously but to be really aware and conscious of my own brain <sighs> so I hope that makes a little bit of sense <clears throat> really glad that I have Brandon here as a companion. He's really understanding and really supportive of me and my journey and my mental health. Um, at first it was really hard for him when I relapsed, but he, um, but we were able to get through it and, and he understands how I have to do and treat myself now. and. And he's just never seen me this dark consistently. Because um, the last time I've been, or I was this dark, where I had this much anxiety, was, um, I, I, I'm not sure if it was when Keenan left. Um, when I was, that's when I, I mean, both, well, both when Josh and Keenan left, I did this journey. I just did it differently with Josh. It involved the, the um, divorce counseling books and the love to air and the Bible and praying and all sorts of stuff relating to trying to prevent divorce from happening. And with Keenan, I was studying mental health counseling for school. And so I was reading my psychology books all the time and learning about CBT and implementing those things and now it's a it's a spiritual journey for sure with a lot of different other books um, but this is definitely the first time where I'm doing this journey and um, promoting a sense of exposure and self-love before they weren't exactly like this. So, thanks again for watching and I love you guys. And be sure to like and subscribe.